I encourage you to do three things if you are to overcome the enemy. Firstly, take your eyes off the problem and focus your eyes on God's promises. Magnify God instead of your problems. Secondly, change your words from talking about defeat and begin to speak God's word over your situation. Begin to speak God's promises over your situation. And finally, call on the power that the name of Jesus Christ offers. Loving Jesus Christ, living for Jesus Christ, doesn't mean you'll have a life free from any problems. Equally, when you face challenges or pain, this doesn't mean the Lord loves you any less than someone else. You see, God doesn't promise us a life devoid of suffering, pain, problems or difficult situations. As a matter of fact, He tells us the opposite. In John 16, verse 33, Jesus tells us that in the world, we will have troubles or tribulation. And in many other passages throughout Scripture, we are reminded by the Apostles as well as Jesus Himself, that Christians will suffer, be persecuted, face many trials and so on. They don't tell us this so that we could be miserable or feel anxious, but to remind us of our reality and to encourage us to stay strong in our faith. In Exodus 14, verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. This is a promise for us, a promise of safety. God will fight your battles. He will fight our battles, and we need to only hold our peace. And so there is no need to go back and forth trying to fight here and there and everywhere. Instead, let God work on your behalf, because we have a promise that the battle you face belongs to the Lord. The Bible in Philippians 4, verse 19, says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is a promise for provision. If you have a need, God can meet that need. This doesn't mean you will have everything you want, but in Jesus Christ, you will have everything that you can ever need. So I encourage you to get to know God's promises, get to know them and hold on to his promises. Trouble falls on the righteous and the wicked. On the rich and the poor, trouble falls on everyone regardless of skin color or religion. Even no one is exempt from trouble. Sickness and disease don't care about how good you are. Tornadoes, earthquakes and hurricanes all don't care about your list of good deeds. We will all face problems. The question then is not how can we avoid trouble and issues in our lives, but how can we better deal with them? The first thing we need to know is that you are not your issues. We are obsessed, particularly in Western culture with labels. We feel the pressure, the need to put labels on everything. However, sometimes our labels attach identities to people based on their struggles. For example, someone that struggles with addiction is an addict. Someone that struggles with alcohol is an alcoholic. Someone that has fallen into adultery is an adulterer. Someone that wrestles with fornication is labeled a fornicator. Do you see the problem with this? It's marrying a person's issues and struggles with their very beings and identities. This is a violation of the image of God in human beings. So I want to tell you today that this is not how God sees us. God does not see us for our issues. The Lord does not see us for our struggles. God sees us for who we are in Him. We are created for a purpose. We are created with gifts and a calling. Experiencing a problem or an issue in this journey of life should not be your identity. You are so much more in Jesus. We will all go through seasons where we will have more questions than answers. Sometimes where it appears is though you have more prayer requests than answered prayers. And I don't know about you, but have you ever gotten to the point where all you can do is just ask God questions? Questions like, Lord, what should I do? How should I handle this? God, how will my family be restored? Father, when will I be healed? Well, here's what you can do. Should you find yourself in such a place? Rather than look for all of the details or answers, rather than examine plan A and revise. Plan B, rather than panic or scratch your head about it, simply invite God into your situation. Invite him into that problem, invite him to be the judge, the jury, the prosecutor and defense for the case that's in front of you. What I'm trying to tell you is that there will be situations where we simply won't have the answers when we want them. There will be certain events that will occur and simply not make sense. And we need to come to terms with that, because it's only once you accept this that you can function through these difficult moments in life. Remember that our Lord Jesus said in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Let me clarify one thing. This verse is not saying, come to me and I'll give you every detail to what's going on in your life. 
It's not saying, come to me so that you can see the whole picture. No, Jesus is saying, come to me with all that burdens you, with all that gives you sleepless nights, with all that worries you. And when you come to me, when you give me those burdens, those problems may still be there, but I'll give you peace. That situation may still be unclear, but I'll give you rest. Matthew 11 verse 29 goes on to say, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Twice in these verses, Jesus mentions rest in him. And by rest, we're literally being told to relax, refrain from worrying about it, stop stressing out about or trying to fix it. It's literally giving it all to the Lord. So think about this for a moment. Could it be that God's letting you face this trial so that you can reach a deeper level of trust in Him? Could it be that God is letting you face this trial so that you can learn and let go and stop trying to control every single aspect, every single detail of your life? Just think about it. Could it be that God's letting you face this test so that He can humble you because maybe you're too self-reliant? You see, always invite God into the midst of your situation because you cannot do it alone. You certainly don't have all the answers you need, but should you go to the Lord? Should you take it to Jesus? You can surely have peace. You can surely have rest. God's promises are what you and I should depend on because God is a faithful God. He's a God who keeps His word because He is truth. Now I pray that this message will serve as a reminder to each and every believer listening. I want you to know that when you begin to trust in God's promises, you'll realize that you are well taken care of. You will lack for nothing. And for those who may be wondering what are these promises, allow me to remind you what the Bible says. In Isaiah 41 verse 13, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, Fear not. I am the one who helps you. This is a promise, a promise for those seasons in life when you feel as though you can't get a break. It's a promise that God Almighty will help you. The Lord will come to your aid. He will be your support. He will be your pillar of strength.